Alright. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to webinar series of EDSA UNSEL 2021. My name is Fiara Diana. I'm a student of English Education Department of Siliwang University as your moderator for today's webinar. All right, so our webinar today will bring the theme, Dare to Speak, Dare to Act. Firstly, let me introduce our presenters. For the presenters, please, you can wave your hand when it's your name. All right, here we have Kak Lukman Hakim, Kak Cepi Ramdani, Kak Cucu Cahyati, Kak Nelly Sadatu Darain, Kak Tias Johar Manik, Kak Nabila Kamilia, and Kak Oktavia Nimsoki. So, totally, we have seven presenters. But before we go any further, I'd like to remind everyone we have a recommendation for this webinar. Number one, this webinar will last for one hour. Two, the only language used to communicate is English, includes for the question. Number three, all participants are suggested to take notes during the presentation. Four, all participants must turn off the audio during the presentation. Five, the presentation will be held in five minutes for each presenters. Six, the moderator will set the time to remind the presenter. Seven, the Q&A session will come after the whole presentation. Question can be typed in the chat box since the beginning of the presentation. And then anyone who is interested in talking directly to the speaker, is pleased to raise your hand and we will facilitate you if we still have time. And the last, if you could not get your answer, the presenter will send it by email. All right, without any further ado, let's begin the presentation with the first presenters. Here I have Ka Lukman Hakim, who will deliver about don't mention doing public speaking is hard. Please, Ka Lukman, five minutes from now. All right, thank you very much to the moderator for giving me the time in the session. Well, I want to take my uh, voice. Can you hear my voice clearly? Yes, I can. It's pretty clear. Okay, thank you very much. Well, in previous measure, I and my friends follow the material and this course that was public speaking. And one of my friends told me that why doing public speaking is so hard? Well, don't mention doing public speaking is hard is my topic in this morning. Can you, next slide please. Hello, I'm Lukman Hakin and I'm here because I love to give presentation about public speaking and you can find me at my Instagram at Lukman Hakim al -Khadi. Next slide please. Well, those are four categories of human communication. The first one is static. This communication will happen between one person and one person or more. Uh, it seems like conversation like usually. The next one is small group communication that will happen between one person and uh, one person or more, one person in one room. They can see each other they can hear, they can see each other. The next one is mass communication. This communication will happen between one speaker and uh, several person or uh, a lot of people or audience who never seen before. Well, the last one is my topic, public speaking. So next, please. What public speaking is? According to Slagel in 2009, that public speaking is spreading the idea in front of people through oration. Moreover, Astuti also said in 2011 that public speaking is the technique of distributing a meaning or a clue to the listener. It can be concluded that public speaking is one of the methods or method to share, to inform the, our idea, our opinion about uh, what our topic. So next one, please. 
Okay, and here, how to start it? I divide it by two parts in here. The first one is the pattern of uh, the first word or the first sentence. We can use why question then what question. According to Jacobs in 2016 that said that, I am actually talking about the first words, the first sentences in our presentation. The appropriate first word in public speaking using is why questions in public speaking. Why we can, we have or we should use the why question and what question or the other question. Because when we start with why question, we can uh, start with our experience, uh, what we see, what we got in the previous time, what we hear and so on. So the next one is about the structure. As Lucas in 29 stated that introduction, party and conclusion are the core of public speaking parts. Yes, uh, this, there, those are three parts in this public speaking abstract. It mean how we start. Uh, we can use why question and body about mind topic that one in front of our audience and then conclusion is the summary of, of, from abstract and body. The next slide, please. Well, in conclusion, public speaking is a method how person share the idea, opinion, or concept, and all of the things that speaker want to audience to or follow what speaker see. And in this case, speaker will get more easy when starting with why question and understanding three parts of public speaking sense. The next one. And here, this is my references in this presentation. Next one. Thank you very much. And did you get the point? If you don't, uh, if you're still confused about what my presentation, you can ask me in a, on the text box, or you can uh, find me at my Instagram. Don't forget the only way to do great work is to love what you to do. What you do. Thank you very much for your nice attention. I apologize for all of my mistake, and I give it back to the moderator. All right, thank you very much, Kalukman. It's such a great beginning for this presentation session. So what we can get is public speaking actually is a part of communication. So don't mention it is hard. And he have gave us the tip to make it easier to start public speaking. It is to, it is to ask him by the question why and paying attention in the three main structure of public speaking. All right, now we'll turn the time over to the, to the second speaker. Here we have Kak Cepi Ramdani, who will deliver about speaking skills, a bridge for your future career. For Kak Cepi, please, five minutes from now. All right, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hello everyone, good afternoon. First of all, I would like to say thank you so much for the moderator for the time and the opportunity. And I do not forget to say thank you so much for all of you, the amazing audience, because you are able to attend this wonderful event as well. I really appreciate it. All right, in this special occasion, I want to explain and share one interesting topic. I think a title about speaking skill, a bridge for your future career. Okay, next. Then here, I divided the topic into four major contents. They are definition of speaking and communication skill, why having speaking skill is important, how to improve communication skill for a better future career, and the last one is conclusion. All right, next. All right, we're gonna start with this part. So what is speaking skill actually? According to Amir 2013, speaking skill is an act of making focus sound, representative of personal ability and the media of communicate effectively. I think to be acceptable by the people, someone who want to speak need to have a good ability in its speaking context because it represents how their speaking skill looks like. This skill allows the speaker to convey their message in fashion and to assure that one will not be misunderstood by those who are listening. So, how about communication skill? What is it? Communication skill is the process of sending and receiving message, sharing and giving meaning, media of interaction, 
show the personality and the way for having a relation. This is according to Helmi 2005. So I think that is the reason why communication skill must be improved like with speaking skill because it represents some another important skills too. Okay, next. After we know the definition, then we have to know too why speaking skill is important. First, it's ability to inform, first read, and, di and the direct. Speaking clearly and confidently can gain the attention of the audience. And of course, I think it provides the golden opportunity for the speaker to make the message now. The second one is ability to benefit directly. Of course, it means that will develop a verbal skill can increase one's negotiation skill and of course, self-confidence is improved. The third one is career enhancement. Employers have always valued the ability to speak. Well, it is always will be an important skill and well worth the effort in fully developing. And the fourth is personal satisfaction. Of course, I think people who have good communication skill will have a high confident feeling. And of course, it leads, it leads them to appreciate themselves as satisfied as possible. All right, next. And here we go. We're gonna move into the main topic of this presentation, how to improve communication skill for a better future career. Next, please. Well, everyone, speaking skill is very important in preparing the future career. Moreover, it, it is career is the communication field, such as a business which often conducting the meeting. This skill is very required as the learnable skill. In order to help you gain a good communication skill, at least in a business meeting, here I provide some simple tips that can be done continuously. First is talk to entire group. When speaking in group, we can move our eyes around and talk to anyone who is listening to what we have to say. When responding to a question, address the entire group, not just the person who asked the question. The second one is reach out and encourage feedback. Actively encourage and command and feedback based on what we have to contribute to the audience, whether it is from the audience to us or from us to the audience. And the third one is don't be a time long. Be true, but don't take much time to get our message across that we lose other attention because our, because audience may be bored about what we say or what we speak about our speaking topic. So I think that's some tips that we can actually do in this field. In conclusion, some strategies might, must be considered to improve a to improve both speaking and communication skill. Do it continuously and it will affect our performance in that area. Lastly, how our speaking skill looks like now will influence how the future cut it ahead. So I think improve your speaking skill, reach your bright future career. So next. And here are some preferences that I use to deliver this presentation. Okay, I think thank you so much for your nice attention. And I think that's all from me. And back to the moderator. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hello everyone, can you hear me voice? All right, sorry, um, I have a um, little connection problem here. So uh, thank you very much, Ka Jeffy. Now we know that speaking skill can be a bridge for us to achieve a, a, a better future career, all right? And uh, I remind you to all participants, you can fill the attendance on the link provided in the chat box. All right, now we will move to the next speaker. Here we have Kak Cucu Cahyati, who will deliver about 
Five things daily practice to improve your English speaking skills. For Kak Cici Cahyati, the time is yours. Thank you so much to the moderator and thank you so much for all audience who came in this webinar. I hope all of you guys are in the good conditions. Hello, my name is Chuchu Cahyati. I would like to share you five daily practices to improve your English speaking skill. There are three main of my presentation. So the first, I would like to share you what is speaking. The second is speaking components. And the last is five daily practices to improve your English speaking skill. So without any further ado, let's get started. The ability to speak English confidently and convincingly nowadays is a valuable asset to anyone who want to take an active role in this world. Now and more than ever, English speaking skills has become both a vital life skill and a secret weapon in career development. Perhaps more than any other course of study, English speaking skills offer you an extraordinary practical knowledge and skill that lead to satisfying personal and professional development. That's really great, isn't it? So what is speaking? According to Bailey, 2005, speaking is a process of interactions where speakers intend to build meaning through producing, receiving, and processing information. For example, when you are talking to your friends, you are telling them about something. In this case, you act as a producer of information and your friends as a receiver of information. Next. All right, now let's move to the speaking components. There are several speaking components. The first is 55% of words spoken, including to vocabulary, phrases, and sentences. And also the number two is 38% of tone. Range, appeal, and credibility of voice. And the last is five minutes and eye contact. I don't want to share looking forward for the nine points of my presentations. So next, here are the five daily practices to improve your English speaking skill. The first is listening to English audio. It can be music, YouTube, podcast, Spotify, documentary, or etc. This kinds of activity is really important for you to do because through this activity, you can penetrate your brains to the English words or vocabulary, and you can do this activity while you are do, do the host chores or breakfast or others. And number two is talk daily with English. Since speaking or English speaking is a practice, so you can do this every day in your daily life. You can do a monologue, like you can record your videos, talk about what you are going to have in this morning or in the afternoons and you can tell to yourself what is interesting and you can do that in five minutes, 10 minutes or even longer every day. And the third is set a daily word goal. Since uh, speaking or English speaking is related to vocabulary, some of my uh, friends say that when we don't have any vocabulary, even though we have a lot of ideas in our brains, and then we can't convey it because we are like a vocabulary. So it is really important to improve your vocabulary every day to set a daily word goal. And the fourth is write a daily journal. All right, you must be confused. How come English speaking related to writing? It is of course, because like what I said before, speaking is need a vocabulary. So make sure uh, when you do the write the daily journals, you can gain a lot of vocabulary. You can find many references from the journals, articles, news, or etc. But using in English, of course. Like what Wilkins on 1983, he states that without grammars, uh, less can be conveyed, but without vocabulary, nothing can be conveyed. So it can be concluded that vocabulary is a really important part of our speaking. And the last is performs daily translations. You might be ever feel like when you want to speak in English, like your brands produce like um, translating from your mother tongues into English. So when you do the daily translation, it's make your brands like automatically create an English word without thinking first. So I think that's all from me. I hope these kinds of tips um, help you to increase or to improve your English speaking skills. And don't forget to practice, practice and practice because practice makes perfect. Thank you so much. Back to the moderator. All right, thank you very much, Kajuchu, for sharing with us. So 
She suggests us to, to do these five things to improve our speaking skill. Let's recall together. It is listening to English audio, talk in English, set a daily word call, write a daily journal, and perform daily translation. All right. So our topic of discussion is getting more interesting from time to time. Now we have Kak Nelly Saadatudarain, who will deliver about independent learning to enhance English speaking skills. All right, for Kak Nelly, five minutes from now, please, you may start your presentation. Thank you, moderator. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you all for coming. My name is Nelly Saadatudarain, and today I'd like to talk about independent learning to enhance English speaking skill. I've divided my presentation into four parts. First, the definition of independent learning and speaking skill. Second, what technique that will be used to enhance English speaking skill. Third, why using that technique. And last, but not least, how to apply the technique. All right, next. I'll begin with the definition of independent learning. As mentioned by Naiba Hall, independent learning is a component of cognitive learning theory, which states that the behavior, motivation, and aspect of learning environment affect an individual's achievement. So what is speaking skill? According to Hamad et al, speaking skill is one of the four essential language basic skills. It is very important that will enable learners to communicate with others effectively. Next. So what technique that will be used to enhance English speaking skill? Many researchers have researched on speaking skill and come up with some strategies or a technique to enhance your speaking skill. But in this occasion, I'd like to introduce you with one technique, namely imitation technique. Pierce Misam defines that imitation is impersonation of words, a person words or a behavior. I'm aware that imitating is copying actions or words. Hence, this technique is all about copying what native speaker yeah. says. Next. So why using imitation technique? First, improve your English pronunciation and expression. Emma stated that by imitating a native speaker, you can improve your English pronunciation and expression faster than any other method. Second, teaching yourself to communicate in the most natural way. She continued to state that by imitating a native speaker, like words, phrases, uh, poses, uh, intonation, and gesture of English native speaker, you are teaching yourself to communicate in the most natural way. And third, improve many aspects of your spoken English. Influent claim that this technique can help you improve many aspects of your spoken English, such as your sentence structure, your vocabulary, and most importantly, your ideas and ability to express your ideas or thoughts effectively. Next. All right, so how to apply the technique? First thing you need to do is like a video that you like in English, remember, in English. Then try to deliver the entire speech on your own words. You can apply this concept in three ways. First, imitating small portion, like phrases or short sentences. Then move on to imitating larger portions, such as a group of sentences or long sentences. And finally, you can try to deliver this, uh, the entire speech by your own. Next. All right, to summarize, Rao argue that speaking is the most important among four language skill. And there are several strategies or technique to enhance English speaking skill. And one of them is imitation technique. You can apply imitation technique by yourself. It means without peers or partners. Next. These are some references that I used to make my presentation. And this brings us to the end of my presentation. Thank you so much for your kind attention. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Back to the moderator. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much for your presentation, Kak Nelly. So now we don't have to be confused when we don't have friends to practice with to, in, to enhance our speaking skill. We can use that imitative method, all right? And for the participants, I remind you once again to fill the attendance on the link provided in the chat box. And if you have any question, you can directly type it in the chat box. All right, here, 
We have other interesting topic on public speaking. It is say goodbye to your public speaking fear. Well delivered by Kat Diaz Johanman. Hello, Kat Diaz, are you with us? Hello. All right. So, Kat Diaz, please, five minutes from now. All right. Hello everyone, my name is Tias Jarmanik. I'm from Siliwangi University. I'd like to thank you, the moderator for giving me time and to all of the audience for coming. I'm so happy to be here. All right, everyone, have you ever feel anxiety or nervous? Yes, uh, when I was in elementary school, I very hate learning about speech. Why? Because every time I speak, I always being anxiety. I always being nervous. But now I know how to overcome it. So let's discuss about say goodbye to your public speaking fear. Next. Ready, next. All right. Fear of public speaking is a common form of anxiety. So now what is anxiety? Spielberger defined that anxiety as an affliction, emotional state or condition, which is characterized by subjective feelings of tension, apprehension, and worry, and by activation or arousal of this autonomic nervous system. Next. According to Guinness Book of Record, that 54% of adults rate the fear of public speaking higher than the fear of death. Wow. So now, how we can overcome our fear of public speaking? Next. Here I have three tips how to overcome our fear of public speaking according by Brian Tracy. The first tip is get organized. Ahead of time, carefully plan out the information you want to present, including any props, audio, or visual aids. If you have organized all of your thoughts and your materials, it will help you more become calm and relaxed. And the, the, second, the second tips is change the way you think. Being anxiety, being nervous is normal. I have some story from, uh, from Dr. Sandy Petil that there are two person when become speakers in public. Let's call the first person by Mr. Perfect and the second person by Mr. Confident. Mr. Perfect, when speaking in public, he takes very seriously for his performance. He wants to be perfect and he doesn't want to do a mistake at all. So what happened? Yes, Mr. Perfect being anxiety, Mr. Perfect being nervous, and he forgot all of the material for his performance. Different from Mr. Confident. Mr. Confident, when speaking in public, he takes very easy, slowly, and relaxed. He never afraid to do a mistake because you know no one is perfect. Everyone can do a mistake and that is normal. Now, what makes them different? Yes, their mindset. Why? Because our mindset is important. If in your mindset you can do anything, sure, you will can. Vice versa, if you have close mindset that you can't do anything, it will be true. So now, what do you want to be? Do you want to be Mr. Perfect or Mr. Confident? Make your choice. Next. Oh, uh, no. Uh, the, last uh, the last tips is practice more. Now, practice your complete presentation for uh, complete your presentation several times. You can do it for, uh, you can do it by yourself, by in front of the mirror maybe, or consider making the video of your presentation so you can watch it and see opportunities for improvement. Or maybe you can do it for some people you are comfortable with and ask for the feedback. All right, next. Now, while using these tips, the first is Lee Franco is identify that people are more likely to remember information that is meaningful, useful, and of interest to them, different or unique, organized, visual, and simple. The second is Napoleon Hill mentioned that whatever the mind of man can conceive and believe it can achieve. And the last is practicing your talk will refine both your content and your delivery, which will result in a police presentation mentioned by Alexander Tirasi. Next. 
All right, everyone, remember being anxiety, being nervous is a normal. But we can improve that by three tips how to overcome our fear of public speaking according to Brian Tracy that I have told you before. What is it? Get organized, change the way you think, and practice more. All right, in closing, I want to state the statement from William Pollard. Uh, no? Please, before? William Pollard, that we don't change. There is no innovation, creativity, or incentive for improvement. Those who initiate change will have a better opportunity to manage the change that is inevitable. All right, next. And this is my reference for uh, to make this presentation. And maybe enough for me. Next. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your nice attention. Abdi uh, Manik, back to moderator. All right, thank you very much, Kadias. So, um, wow, <laughs> I was so surprised to know fear of public speaking is hard, fear of death. But don't worry, now we have known about the best strategy to overcome it. It is to get our course. All right. I'm sure our audience is eagerly waiting for the next topic. So let's welcome our next presenter. It is Kak Nabila Kamilia, who will deliver about fear of public speaking, overcoming anxiety, and presentation. For Kak Nabila, please, five minutes from now. Thank you, moderator. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hello, everyone. My name is Nabila Kamilia from Siliwangi University. First of all, I want to thank, to thank you to the all audience for attending this seminar, and I hope all of you are in a good condition. All right, in this occasion, I would like to present about overcoming anxiety in a presentation. Next. I have divided my presentation into three parts. The first one is what is speaking anxiety. The second is anxiety in public speaking. The third is the causes of presentation anxiety and how to overcome it. Next. All right, before we talk about anxiety in public speaking, we should know first what speaking anxiety is. According to Ortega, speaking anxiety could be interpreted in many ways such as catching a cold and getting confused, blood pressure, hand trembling, or other parts of the body, nervousness, failing to recall internalized information, and avoiding eye contact. In short, speaking anxiety is the nervousness that speaker feels before or during speaking. Next. All right, now... After get the understanding about what speaking anxiety is, now let's talk about anxiety in public speaking. Fear of public speaking is a common range is a common form of anxiety. It can range from slight nervousness to paralyzing fear and panic. According to Kingcourt and Melton, public speaker high, highly common mental disorder are anxiety disorder. And in fact, some of experts estimate that as much as 77% of the population has some level of anxiety regarding public speaking. So it can be concluded it is normal to feel anxious when we're doing a presentation. But however, all of us want to success in our presentation, right? Therefore, we should know how we should know how to overcome the anxiety, the success in presenting and become a good speaker. Next. Now, before we discuss about how to overcome the presentation anxiety, we should know first the causes of it, because if we already know the problem sources, we could fix it directly and effectively. All right, the first and the most common cause of presentation anxiety is lack of confidence. Lack of confidence could happen either with lack of preparation or lack of material mastery. Therefore, before we're going to present something, we should make sure ourselves that we already get well prepared and mastery the material because the well preparation could reduce the change of making mistakes and help us when we got confused or get off the track during the presentation. And the second cause is self-focus. When we're doing a presentation, we stand in front of a lot of people, then we feel anxious. We tend to think too, too much about ourselves. There will so many unnecessary questions in our head, such as, am I look stupid? Am I look awkward? Is everybody judging me? When we're too busy, internalize, when we're too busy to ourselves, not to the material, we will lose focus 
and the presentation not gonna run well. So when we're doing a presentation, we have to point our focus outward to the material, not to ourselves. And the sec and the third cause of presentation anxiety is discomfort body. When we're doing a presentation, we see the amount of our audience, everybody staring at us, then we feel anxious. We will see them as a monster because we feel they are intimidating us. So what should we do? I mean, our then our natural body reaction when we feel anxious, we're looking down, we're avoiding eye contact, and our whole body becomes stiff. So what should we do? What should we do is start from the eyes. Remember, our eyes should pay attention. Start to make an eye contact to our audience individually in turn. Do, do not look at them at once because it will make you feel, feel intimidated. Just look at them individually in turn. Imagine we are in a conversation with a person. Imagine we are talking to them, not presenting. It will make us less nervous, focused, and confident. All right. In conclusion, there is three simple things we can do to overcome the presentation anxiety. The first one is get well prepared and master the material. The second is point our focus outward to the material. And the third is make an eye contact to our audience individually in turn and get relaxed. All right, next. And here are some references for my presentation. Next. All right. I think that's all for me. I hope it can be useful for all of us. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much, Kak Nabila, for your, for your presentation. And the material is actually very beneficial for students like us who can get away from presentation in our daily lives. All right, so now we know what causes the anxiety and how to overcome it. Thank you very much. And then here I have our last presenters who deliver about secrets on successful speaking. For Ka Octaviani Nursofi, it's from the place you may start. All right, thank you for the time. So, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, everyone. Firstly, I want to say thank you to all of you for attending this webinar series. And I'm Octavia Nursofi. Here, I'm going to review the secrets on successful public speaking to talk like Ted. Next. Ideas are the currency of the 21st century. As Robin said, I am a learning machine, and this is the place to learn. Some people are particularly good at expressing their ideas, and ideas that effectively package and deliver can change the world. So wouldn't it be amazing to determine the exact techniques that shared by the world's greatest communicators and apply their secrets to a major audience? So here are the secrets to talk like Ted. Next. Talk like Ted is divided into three parts. It's revealing three components of inspiring presentation. And the most engaging presentation are, the first one is emotional. They touch my heart. Great communicators reach your head and touch your heart. And the second one is novel. They teach me something new. According to the neuroscientists, novelty is the most effective way to attract people's attention. And the last one is memorable. They present content in ways I'll never forget. You may have novel ideas, but if your audience cannot recall what you said, those ideas don't matter. Next. Now let's jump into the first component. So the first component is emotional. The head of TED, Chris Anderson, mentioned that the key part of TED format is that we have human connecting to human in a direct and almost vulnerable way. It can be said that you are naked in a stage uh, and the most effective conversation is one where people can truly feel humanity. And the first secret on successful public speaking is unleash the master within. Professor Larry Smith defined that passion is the thing that will help you create the highest expression of your talent. Passion leads to mastery and your presentation is nothing without it. And the second secret is master the art of storytelling. Brown claimed that stories are just data with a soul. Ideas are the currency of the 21st century and stories facilitate the exchange of the currency. And the third secret is 
have a conversation like this persistently and uh, internalize your concerns so that you can present as easily as talking to a close friend. As Professor Amikadi said, don't fake it till you make it, but fake it till you become it. Next. And the second component is novel. The author of The Buying Brain, Dr. I.K. Predip, said that novelty recognition is a hardwired survival tool all humans share. Our brains are trained to look for something brilliant and new, something that stands out. And the fourth secret is teach me something new. As Robert Ballard said, everything I'm going to present to you was not in my textbook when I went to school. So your audience new information or you can provide novel solutions to all problems. And the fifth secret is deliver job dropping moment. The third commandment not that still should not simply throw it out tie you still stick. The job dropping moment in the presentation is uh, when the presenter provides a surprising moment that is memorable and attract the audience's attention. And the sixth secret is lighten up. Don't take yourself or, or your topic too seriously. The brain likes humor. Humor reduces uh, differences and makes it easier for your audience to accept your message. And a psychologist, Martin, believed that over the past century, a sense of humor has become a highly prized personality characteristic. Next. Uh, and the last component is memorable. Francis Ford Coppola claims that you have to really be courageous about your instinct and your ideas. Otherwise, you just will knuckle under and things that might have been memorable will be lost. And the next secret, the seventh secret, is stick into the 18-minute rule. 18 minutes is the ideal length of the for the presentation. And, pro and Professor Larry Smith also support that thinking is hard work. In 18 minutes, you can uh, make powerful argument and attract people's attention. And the next secret is paint a metal picture with a multi-sensory experiences. Remember that the brain doesn't pay attention into boring things. The brain desires multi-sensory experiences. As Dr. Richard Mayer claimed that it's better to present an explanation in words and pictures than solely in words. And the last but not least, the last secret is stay in your lane. Sir Richard Branson said, I don't think works as works and pay as play. It's all living. Be authentic, be open, and be transparent. Most people can spot a pony. And if you try to be someone that you are not, you won't be able to gain the trust of your audience. Uh, you can learn from others uh, and how they succeed in public speaking, but you'll never make a lasting impression on people unless uh, you leave your own mark. Next. And he here are some references that I use uh, in this presentation. Next. Uh, and that's all the secrets on public speaking. Thank you for your attention. And if you have any question, you can drop it in the chat box or you can reach me through email. Thank you very much. Back to the moderator. All right, thank you very much, Kaopta. It's such a great presentation and also a great closing for our presentation session. Now we even know the secrets on doing public speaking. All right. So um, thank you for all presenters for giving your valuable insight on public speaking. So with that, we'll go ahead to the question and answer session. It seems that we have uh, about 12 minutes for question and answer session. Um, but don't worry, uh, if there are still questions left, um, the presenter will answer it by email. All right. Let's see in the chat box. Are there any questions? All right, it seems. Ah, we have a question from Susan Supriatin. All right, let me read this for the presenters. Excellent presentation. Well done, everyone. I want to ask how to overcome the filler word that comes out automatically when we got language like mm, mm, etc. All right. And then, oh, we have another question here from Shifa Hofifa. 
Oh, it seems that this question is directly to Ka Chuchu. All right, let me read this. Based on Ka Chuchu, this vocabulary is really important. And sometimes when I want to speak in front of the public, I tend to forget the words that I'm going to say. So I want to ask you how to overcome that problem in that situation. All right. Um, does anyone have a question again? All right, maybe from now, uh, we can just start by answering this question, this two question. All right, um, does anyone have an answer for the presenters? Um, who would like to answer? Where is the first question or the second question? All right, Kajuju, please. All right, I would like to answer the questions from Shifa. Shifa Khopipa, thank you so much for your question. It's a nice question. Yeah, actually, sometimes we forget the vocabulary that we want to, to, to say. So I think that's okay. You can use the pillars like what, Mm, what I mean, or or you just explain what you what you want to say to them. So don't force your brain too hard to. So don't for, don't force your brain too hard on remembering the vocabulary that you want to, to say, but just try to you know it's like explain explain that you want to say to them. For example, you are forget to say like um food and you can explain it through another way when you forget the word of food like you know there is the things that i would like to eat and uh, it is just really nice and usually people just let it in into their mode so you know what is it i i guess people will do that so i hope you understand what i mean thank you so much for the question All right, thank you very much, Kajuju. So she said that um, it is fine if we forget some words. Um, we can explain it by another way. It's like, just explain how it looks, how it tastes. Yeah, like that. So for Shifa, are you satisfied with the answer? All right, thank you, Shifa. And then, um, Let's move to the next question. Um, here we have the first question from Susan Supriyatin. She asked about how to overcome the filler word that comes out automatically when we get things such like hmm. Mm. Uh, maybe um, Kat Chuchu have mentioned it, yeah. And uh, the answer of Shifa's question. Maybe another presenter wanna add the answer. All right, I want to try to add to answer the question. All right, please catch up. Okay, I think this uh, Susan Supriya from the Susan Supriya's questions and with the Shifa Hopipa question, I think making a filler like um, um it is natural. It's it, and I think it is okay when we speak on when we are speaking in front of the people. And I think how to overcome that situation or how to overcome that condition is, uh, I think it is a simple way to overcome such fear because what we have to do is to make a lot of practice because when we have a lot of practice, ultimately our brain automatically will set what words or what sentence that we that we will deliver uh, next, something like that. So uh, I think I suggest that to, I mean, to minimize the fear like um, um, feel like that is to have a lot of exercise. But in, in this case, I think so far it's good because it is natural. There is a perfect one when uh, someone speak in, uh, in front of the people. I think maybe that's all from, from me. Thank you. All right, thank you very much, Kajepi. So based on um, Kajepi, he, he suggests us to 
um, have a lot of practice, right? So uh, the filler word like, um, it is absolutely normal, but we can minimize it by um, enough practice. So uh, make sure that you have enough practice. All right. Does anyone want to add to this question for the presenter? Uh, yeah, I have an addition for Susan question. All right, all right. Please, Kak Nabila. I believe that uh, filler comes out when we when we speak fast. So to overcome it, you can slowly your you can speak slowly to to reduce the fillers. All right, I think that's all. Thank you. All right, thank you, Kanabila. So um, she suggests us to uh, uh, to minimize the filler word. Like um, we can, what is it? Like slow down. Don't don't be um too speed while you are speaking like that. Um, all right. From for Susan, are you satisfied with the answer? Yeah, definitely. Thank you for those answers. It's well, pretty clear explanation. Thanks. All right. Thank you very much. And then um, it seems like we have one question left here in the chat box. It is from Azu. Let me read for the presenter. I think I'm curious about what are the categories of good speaker and the differences between good speaker and good presenter? All right, I'll give it to the presenter. Anyone wanna answer this question? Yes, Ria. All right, Kaneli, please. Uh, thank you. Thank you for the question, Azum. So you are curious about categories of good speaker and the differences between speaker or presenter. So presenter is one of the part of speaker. So we are speaker and moderator is a speaker too. So how to be a good speaker? Uh, first, know your audience. So you know what your audience want and what they need in your uh, presentation or your webinar. And then after that, you can plan what you're going to say. Uh, so you organize what you're going to say and for what uh, audience need. So, and then the last thing you need to practice. And as, uh, as mentioned by my friends, the practice makes perfect. All right, uh, I hope uh, that can answer your question. Thanks, back to the moderator. All right, thank you very much, Kaneli, for the answer. And then, uh, all right, for the other speaker or presenter, maybe all you right. have some addition. All right, Kak Lukman, please. All right, uh, for for the categories of that speaker, uh, yes, I actually agree with uh, what Nelly says before said before, but I have addition in here that. For a public speaker, we, we have to be honest. We have to be honest, yes. Uh, when we share the information, when we uh, inform the information, well, we, we have to be honest about the, our data, but because that all of the things uh, need a responsibility. Well, yes, we have the honest, and then we can practice more than make it slowly and don't be nervous that all that's all for me i give it back to the moderator all right thank you very much Lukman, for the addition so based on the statement from Lukman and Kanali, we can come to that um to be a good speaker or the presenter the categories from Kalukman is honesty. So uh, we have to be honest uh, when we share inf information to the audience. And then um, to be a good speaker or good presenter, we have to organize what we are going to say. And then uh, the most important thing is we have to practice a lot because practice makes perfect. All right. Uh, all right. 
I remind once again to all the participants, you can fill the attendance because it is just available while um, this webinar is held. So please, you can fill the attendance on the link provided in the chat box. All right. Just me um, one. Yes, Kajapi. Uh, can I add the answer for from uh, Azu? I mean, uh, the question from Azu. Can I add uh, the answer? Yes, you can. Sure, please. Thank you so much. Okay, I think uh, the question you are. I'm so curious uh, about what the, what is the categorized about uh, between the good speaker and good uh, presenter. And I think, uh, in my opinion, good good presenter might can uh, might maybe can be a good speaker, but not all good speaker is a good presenter. Do you get the point? I I I I reply, good presenter maybe can be a good speaker, but not all the good speaker is a good presenter because for example, in reality, a lot of youth, a lot of a uh, young generation, maybe they can categorize as because uh, the, the, the ability to speak is really good. But when they ask, when they are asked to, to present, to present something, of course, about maybe some topic about in front of many people. Maybe if, yeah, of course, uh, maybe they cannot uh, present the material as well because I think it's it's a really different. Good, good presenter might can be a good speaker, but a good uh, speaker is not, uh, or I mean, is not, not all a good presenter. All right, thank you very much, Kajabi. So the point is that the good presenter can be a good speaker, but not all the good speaker is a presenter. All right, so it's, it's enough. All right, for, for, the, for the answer, I hope you're satisfied with the answer from our right. Thank you, Azu. All right. Um, it seems that our time is up for the Q&A session. So um, I close the question and answer session. Thank you for all the participants and presenters for um, the question and the answer for each one. All right. Um, now I want to say thank you so much for all presenters. Sorry, all right. Um, I will continue, and then so the conclusion of this presentation is: public speaking is a part of communication. Therefore, we don't have to be fearful. The core of our fear, our anxiety, and giving up is negative thinking and lack of preparation. And as a result, practicing, there are many different types of speaking practice that we can practice. As in the house, turn out my camera to make my question more simple. Right. I'll continue the So, good public speaking skills will be beneficial for everyone. Can open my 
have access for years. All right. Hopefully, this video will for us. Thank you guys for attending. I'm sorry for the mistake. Bye bye. See you later. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. All right. And now for. Thank you very much, everyone. Don't forget to fill the attendance. Have a great day. All right, thank you so much, Fia. I'm sorry uh, I take uh, this session. Before we leave the meeting, uh, please, to all participants, to turn on the camera. We will take the picture. All right, uh, I will count one, two, three. One more time, one, two, three. For uh, page second, wait, one, two, three. All right. Thank you so much for all participants who turn on your camera. Back to Via. All right, I think uh, our moderator has an uh, unstable connection. So thank you so much, guys. Uh, you can leave this meeting. Thank you so much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Have a nice day. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. See you the next time. Maybe that's all from me. Thank you. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you so much, everyone. See you in the next opportunity. Stay safe, stay healthy.